Hey there everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another video. Today I'm doing something quite different, and that is I'm going to be showing you some of my uh, art uh, with a view of getting your advice on uh, selling it. I have never really sold my original art uh, very much over the years. It's just not a big part of what I uh, do, but I've kind of reached the point where I realize uh, this stuff is piling up. I've got stacks and stacks of it, and uh, uh, I can't just hold on to all of it. So I thought I'd sort of go through some of these uh, old illustrations. This one from the uh, Realism Challenge uh, book. And I've tried to select things that I think would look uh, nice, framed on someone's wall somewhere. Uh, and as we look at it, maybe uh, you can think of um, uh, advice you might want to give me about selling original art, since I haven't really done very much of this over the years. And then also, you know, if uh, you can guide me toward, uh, if you personally um, have different uh, types of uh, my art that you've seen over the years that you would be most interested in buying, I'd love to hear uh, about that, because um, I can't put all of it up at once. In fact, my thinking is that I'm going to have to uh, put just a few of them up at a time. Uh, for sale, and uh, I guess uh, I want to get people's thoughts on which type of art, out of all the different styles I've done, because I've done so many over the years, uh, which uh, types of art would you personally be most eager to uh, own? So, of course, this is all the Realism Challenge stuff. You know, something like this, I think, uh, is quite a small illustration. It's only about three or three and a half inches from top to bottom. Uh, something like this framed. Uh, and hanging on the wall, I think, could be quite a, a nice addition to uh, someone's home. Uh, and so anyway, yeah, I just sort of picked out the various uh, pieces of art from the Realism Challenge that I would be willing to sell uh, to show you uh, that type of art. Now let's move on to another type, which probably uh, many of you are more familiar with, and that is uh, art from my YouTube videos. So as you know, I've been uh, creating uh, YouTube videos for more than 12 years now, and uh, uh, along with that process comes the creation of a lot of art, like this one that I did the other day. And, uh, you know, smaller pieces like this I think I could probably uh, sell for a, a more modest sum. I know that for a lot of people, you know, a lot of people don't have loads of money. They can't uh, blow a lot of money on a large, highly detailed piece of art. Here's the one that I did. Uh, of the Beatrix uh, Potter art. I think I'll have to clean up <laughs> this little <laughs> splotch of uh, ink that happened down here. Um, but uh, yeah, there's just a wide variety of things that I've done over the years on YouTube that I think would look nice uh, framed on somebody's wall. Um, of course, not everything. Some of it is so based on instruction that I don't know if it would work. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, an art collection. Here's just one of Spongebob. I thought I'd ask in general, are you more likely to buy artwork that is of a famous character like this? Uh, uh, like Spongebob or Darth Vader. <laughs> Quite a little contrast there between those two different characters. Uh, maybe you're an animal fan. You might be more interested in these uh, animal illustrations that I've done. Hang on, I'll just show the animal illustrations all in a row. Yeah, for whatever reasons, uh, the, the cat illustrations are the ones that uh, I found first. Um, and, uh, yeah, this, you know, let me know if this is the type of thing you would most be interested in getting. I know we have a lot of people who love animals. I know I do. Uh, but then, yeah, there's just a wide variety of these, uh, you know, chibi-type illustrations. Here's this one of uh, the uh, peacock feather. This one is sort of interesting. I wonder if anyone would be interested in getting one of the uh, three-dimensional uh, illustrations that I created for some of these chibi uh, videos. Um, you know, like I said, I, I basically never sold uh, any of these, or at least very rarely. Uh, so they have piled up and I've got lots of them over the years um, stacking up and I think it is time now to finally, uh, you know, acknowledge the inevitable that I can't hold on to this stuff forever and uh, let's go ahead and start sharing it with the world. But it, yeah, it is interesting, you know, I didn't deliberately plan on creating frameable uh, works of art, but very often they sort of turn out to be things that I think could work that way. And what home, really, would want to be without 
the Korgushi, <laughs> Korgi Sushi, <laughs> or indeed the uh, Abraham Lincoln Pikachu. I mean, how have you lived without having this framed and hanging on your wall? So yeah, some, you know, different people have different tastes. Uh, and uh, yeah, any number of these things. Of course, there's, there's manga style illustrations. I, you know, initially I was best known maybe for doing manga style illustrations. So I've got uh, loads of those. Uh, but as you know, you know, I sort of um, widened my horizons, I guess, in terms of the subject matter on YouTube, and there's uh, there's quite a lot of different types of stuff. Let me pull back a little so you can see the entirety of that one. Uh, so again, more sort of realism challenge type of things. And illustrate. This one was about how to draw freckles, but I think it ends up being a nice drawing in its own right. Something like this. Uh, I think eventually I... I added some work to and put into uh, Manga Art, one of my books. Uh, and uh, speaking of things that are in books, I have an awful lot of illustrations uh, that come from published books, like this one from uh, one of the Mastering Manga books. Uh, those illustrations may be not so many of them suitable for framing, but a few of them are. And uh, sorry to be jumping around in terms of the source of different things, but I just, just thought I'd show a few more of these things that were created for YouTube over the years. Again, these sort of pre-existing characters, are you more likely to be interested in that type of thing um, rather than uh, something that I created myself? Here's a one-of-a-kind. I think we can all agree this illustration created based on suggestions of my viewers, including Bailey J. back when she had blonde hair. And the talking Jazza. <laughs> Back when he was a doll that people could get for Christmas. Remember those days? <laughs> so who knows? You know, for different people, this might be the one. Uh, here's the one that was on uh, holding hands. I thought, you know, that might be a nice one framed. This, do you remember the scribble drawing where I did, uh, I challenged myself to make an illustration that is composed entirely of scribbles. Let's see how close we can get in before it goes out of focus. Whoop, there you go. So you can see it really was made entirely out of scribbly little lines. This kind of thing I think could be quite nice uh, framed. And oh here's one for sure for you Star Wars fans. We already showed the uh, Darth Vader but this one I think of the uh, Millennium Falcon uh, would look very nice in a frame. And so, yeah, I'm basically just sort of gauging your enthusiasm about these different types of art because i got to choose uh, one or two of them to put up for sale first. And then, you know, another thing that I need advice on, I suppose, is the um, place to put things uh, for sale. Like, should it be eBay? Should it be somewhere else? Hang on, I'm going to grab some more art. This one from my book, uh, Manga Art, some of you may recall this illustration of a little boy, a uh, little Japanese boy putting something in the Japanese mailbox. Here's the original uh, that uh, I used for creating that illustration. Just one or two additions that I, I did in Photoshop, I suppose, to finish off that illustration. But it is substantially done in watercolor and colored pencil. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, advice on uh, the way that I choose to sell this stuff would also be appreciated. I was thinking, you know, especially for the more detailed things, that uh, eBay might be the way to go in terms of getting an auction going. And then, you know, it's just difficult to set a price. I could probably find out the price that people are willing to pay uh, for some of these more detailed illustrations. This was from the 50th issue of my uh, Akiko comic book series. Uh, virtually every character <laughs> that I ever created for the series found its way into this front cover. So you can see that took a long time. I can't sell this for super cheap. I gotta um, see what people are willing to pay. And I was thinking an auction on eBay is maybe the best way to do that. Um, and again, we're going back to the old uh, old days of my Akiko illustrations and various other projects. Uh, what have we got here? I thought it was going to be worth showing. Oh, this one I thought would look nice. This was a front cover illustration that I did. I thought this one framed uh, could be quite... I actually did. The... I actually hand-lettered all that <laughs> for the front cover of this Akiko uh, comic book. 
Um, and so, yeah, forgive me if these ones are a little harder to flip through casually because they, they're larger, you know. But I pulled out all these things. Now, this one, th I've always, always sort of uh, a fan of this one, if I can be a fan of my own <laughs> artwork. I think the, this one with the upside down city of uh, Galarondo, it was called. And uh, again, this one, these old illustrations that I did for these Akiko comics and uh, sometimes for the novels. Uh, I just put loads and loads of time in. My my approach back then was to make the illustrations quite large. Uh, and sometimes just the larger it is, the more time it takes to complete. Uh, you're more inclined to add detail to each and every part of it. Um, but I figure uh, people who remember the old Akiko days, uh, they might enjoy having something like this, where you get the, the five main characters all together in a single illustration. This one was not actually for a front cover. I think it was for a series of trading cards or something that we made. Uh, some of these things, I have to admit, they, uh, I've put them away for so long that I almost forgot they existed. And I was like, hey, I remember making these with my old uh, floating alien character Poog. But I wonder how many people actually saw these illustrations, these particular illustrations, because they were they were made into trading cards that were not very widely available. There's Gax with all his various contraptions popping out of him. There's one of Spuckler back in the days when I was doing the comic book. He was always a fan favorite. So yeah, let me know if uh, anyone watching this video, are you a fan of the old Akiko days? Would, would this be the type of illustration you would be most interested in getting? I don't have a strong sense of how many people who watch these videos or follow me online are uh, from the old days of Akiko and, and recalling uh, when I was doing that series. and I mean, that was really the heart and soul of my uh, career for about... I don't know, six, seven years, something like that. It was the, it was, it was really what I was working on all the time, and that's why there's loads and loads of work. I always felt this one would look nice, uh, framed. It has a sort of children's book illustration quality to it. Those of you who have sold things on eBay, I'd love to hear your advice uh, about that, uh, getting it to work for you, you know, getting the most out of it. Here's one that definitely has the whole crew together and uh, I know the back you know I, I used to go to comic book conventions and uh, people wanted to have the main characters you know not just some random illustration uh, if you could get all the main characters together in a single illustration people would be uh, very excited to own that here's one of the huge ones and there's ones that are even bigger than this I'm going to try to fit it in here and then you pull the camera way back you'll definitely <laughs> see the legs of the tripod for this one but this was a double page I mean it was a, a front cover of a comic book that folded around to the back cover and so yeah you just ended up with a very large illustration and um, you know of course framing uh, a large illustration like this becomes a bigger expense but then you know hanging it on the wall, it becomes a, quite an impressive thing to have in your home. So um, I'm thinking at least some of the things I want to put up for sale are going to be large pieces like this that, uh, you know, are wor worth people's time, basically. And I can see all the little details that I went to on that one. Now, hold on, I'm going to just show a couple last pages before I wind this one down. These are pages from uh, Brody's Ghost, book three as it happens, but of course I've got all the art from the entire six book series. Um, and certain pages are, cer are, are more worthy of framing, I would think, than others. This one has a nice, uh, fairly detailed uh, image in it. I just wonder how many people are interested in original art from some of my comic book series. Um, as I said, not every page is, not all pages are created equal, I, I, I suppose, as you go through some, like a page like this, I don't know of anyone, it's got things that I can cut and pasted from other stuff. <gasps> I'm giving away my trade secrets here, rather than redrawing it a second time. Um, so yeah, there's a, but you know, something like this, again, you don't see Brody in it, but uh, it's quite a detailed uh, 
single splash page illustration. Uh, let me know if you're among the people that would be interested in uh, work from my old uh, comic book days. I shouldn't say old, it's not that long ago <laughs> that I was doing Brody's Ghost. And of course I'm still working on new things even now. Constantly creating new, yet new pages to add to the pile. And that's what you're going to help me do, folks, in the months uh, and uh, probably years ahead as I, as I begin to sell these things. Um, you're going to help me lighten the load of uh, all the work that I have here in the home because uh, I just can't keep it forever. And maybe let's wind down with Miki Falls, the, the series that I was talking about when I first started doing YouTube videos. Some of you may recall that series. Um, more than 600 pages I have uh, of... Uh, well, I suppose if I sold them together as a single page, it must be more than 300 pages. But anyway... Lots and lots of pages of uh, this artwork from the old Mickey Falls days. I thought that one would look nice framed. Um, even though it doesn't have the Mickey Falls logo in it. <laughs> Just mysteriously saying, Summer. But there you go. That's my video showing you artwork that I am considering selling. This is by means uh, not all of it. There's, uh, uh, there's loads more uh, to... Uh, you know, go through and select in terms of, am I willing to part with it? I'm not willing to part with everything I ever did, of course. I'm going to be a little picky about certain things. Uh, but that's just in terms of, does this look like something that anybody would want to get, you know, uh, becomes uh, a big issue. And uh, there we go, Mickey Falls. We'll wind it down with that. My uh, 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 The first series that I did on YouTube, but now already a number of years back. I want to thank you all for watching this video, and thanks especially to those of you who uh, give me some feedback on uh, art that you might consider buying, uh, different advice on how you think I ought to sell, how I ought to go about selling these things uh, on the Internet. And... Uh, that's it. Let's go ahead and wind this one down. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.